we all we talk about race and you know that African Americans and Hispanics get arrested more than, than Caucasians and all classes of drug related arrests. They get sent to jail more, they get prosecuted more, and it's totally, totally unfair and uh, does not represent race characterizations in America. But what's even more subtle underlying this is privilege. Some people are allowed to use cannabis and some people are not. That's all plain and simple it is. It's freaking a privilege game. And I'm telling you all right now, that if the people don't figure this stuff out, get cannabis back in their hands, there is something coming down the pathway, and that's called pharmaceuticalization. Okay, this is what's going on. There is a company in England that is making a cannabis spray. Okay, they are taking cannabis plants, growing them up, and dissolving them in liquid carbon dioxide. Okay, you take dry ice, you put a cork on it, and after a while, you get a little mixture, and you can dissolve cannabis in that mixture. It's been done since the 1800s, okay? But these guys have figured out a way to nicely, cleanly do it with chopped up cannabis that they got from Dutch, from the net Dutch seed banks, okay? And then, and then what happened eventually, these guys were able to make a mixture of one strain with a high THC content and one strain with a high CBD content. These strains are, you can find these in the US and, and a bunch of states. Then they went to the International Naming Com Board and said, this is not ash oil. This is not marijuana. This is nabixamol. This is a total extraction of liquid carbon dioxide straight up from straight ganja that they've mixed up together in one-to-one -one ratio and they're calling it nabixamols. They are allowed to import this into the country. It's straight up from cannabis and they're using it in clinical trials, which is great. It's medicine for patients in hospitals, but you know what they're telling the government? They're saying, look, when you approve our spray, Leave cannabis in Schedule 1, but take our cannabis extraction out of Schedule 1 so we can make buku dollars. So we do not have to uh, wait for, uh, uh, li you know, compete with other growers. So, I'm, I mean, I'm just telling you, this is coming down the pike. It's really crazy. It's a crazy world of privilege. That's pharmaceutical privilege over the people's right to cultivate their own medicine. If it's not... If you guys don't know about this, if you if you wanna if you wanna know part of what's po the politics, please pay attention to this because before you know it, um, you know a pharmaceutical company will have that in your Bartels. So you can get it prescribed. It'll, it'll be coming down. Anyway, this is this is happening under the Obama administration, and uh, Obama himself he has appointed the major person who was responsible for raiding all the cannabis dispensaries in California as to be the head head of the Drug Enforcement Agency. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff. If you guys want to keep seeing those kind of like repressive politics, which keeps lots of people down, keeps the, keeps the privileged politics going, then don't do anything about it. Just kind of keep, keep your little zone. But if you want to see a change, if you want people to have access to this thing, and you, I'm sure you all do, because like everybody wants people to share the, the benefits of Mother Earth. I mean, this is what this is. It's 37 million year old plant. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I want you guys to be very excited that you're in a place like Seattle, which allows 100,000 people to come together like this. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Nowhere else in the world does this happen. But you know, it cannot be just once a day, once a year. It has to be all the time, okay? You can't just go to one place and feel like you can be comfortable on cannabis. Anywhere in the world, it should be a cannabis-free zone. A zone that cannabis can freely be talked about, consumed if appropriate, and just you know part of our landscape like it's been forever. So that's what I that's what I hope to see. And anyway, I'll be back with you all next year.